Dory to lead us in prayer. Thank you. Father, that you will help them make wise decisions and wise choices, Father, for our community as well as for the citizens in our community. We thank you, Lord, that it is your will and not our wants. Again, we just want to say thank you for this community and, Lord, that you have it safe and we just want to give you all the glory and all the honor. And again, tonight, Father, your will and not our wants. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. <coughs> we have a minute for March 8th. Regular meeting. We'll take a few minutes to review the minutes and then let's understand a motion for the board.
Cannon. I wrote those other leases. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised at what you're telling me. Okay, because I represented Oak Hills and I represented SS for right. many years. And the reason they say that is is because I didn't want those water companies to get into the business of arguing FCC lingo. Right. Okay. And the consultant that I've consulted <coughs> with for SS and for Oak Hills and for this one has basically said to me, Lou, don't let the clients get into the middle of refereeing mm -hmm. unlicensed bandwidth. Okay? And so candidly, I don't want the city and I'm recommending the city not get in that business. But if there's some way that there's some middle ground, I'm certainly willing to have the council direct me to meet with you and discuss it. I'm not trying to be an obstructionist. All I'm trying to do is keep this business, which is not in the radio, I understand. telephone, frequency business, out of the business of getting caught in that controversy. I understand that. Uh, my counter proposal to the uh, uh, contract was to submit an addendum of frequency tower. So that in that case, all you're, all you're getting is from the other vendor. Are you using any of these frequencies? Well, then if the answer is yes, then you can't have that tower. If it, if it can be done, for, to, to make it correct, if it can be done that simply, I don't have a problem with it. My consultant that I've talked with says it can't be done that simply. <coughs> I'm certainly willing to the council to put this off and direct us to, to meet about it and talk about it and see if there is a way. But okay. he's told me rather bluntly, as recently as today, because I anticipated from the staff, that this discussion would occur. And on the unlicensed, I don't know how to address the unlicensed because they're in fact unlicensed. Right. And, and that's the dilemma. I just don't understand how to do it. Okay. Okay? But I'm certainly willing to try to be accommodating and to meet you more than halfway if the council directs it. But he told me at the moment that's a hard nut to crack. Okay. Okay? So <clears throat> I would suggest the council table it. You and I have some discussion on it. If you have some discussion with the staff on it, I'll try to figure out a way to meet you. Okay. Council, any questions, any comments? Staff is recommended that we take this item. Uh, you know, just on hearing uh, our attorney and his views, I think that we ought to stick to what we've agreed to. Um, and I would say that uh, we can listen to your feedback, but again, I don't think that we should get involved in that situation. I think you're right, Lee. Um, I think we should just follow what the agreement as is. You can speak to Lou and figure out what we can do, but again, you know, we're going to follow that agreement. Is that your, uh, your recommendation? That's my recommendation. Okay. I'm going to assume that's the table to motion the table. Yeah. Council, is there a second to that? I second it. A motion by Gomez, second by Castillo to table. Item 2A regarding the tower lease agreement with the city of Florida and top bed communications. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries for zero. If it occurs to you and uh, Luke can talk about this uh, and have a, if, if we're going to come to an agreement, can we have a set contract at, at our next council meeting or, or sometime next meeting? Thank you. Uh, okay. We have I'll enough time to see the contract before our next meeting. Surely. It's the same contract you've had at the last meeting that I handed out. I have nothing. Well, you can the yes, it's going to be part of the motion. Thank you. The next item is uh, item 2B, consideration of action to approve the text of municipal maintenance agreement. Uh, Andy and I have been meeting over the state council with that sort of met with the uh, text up over the last few months and actually a couple of years already regarding uh, the maintenance of the median along 181. Andy, have we come to some sort of agreement? Or could you give us a little bit more history for the benefit of the rest of the council and the people in the audience? Well, we've got the tech staff representative. Uh, I'd like for them to step up to uh, introduce themselves and then just go over what we did, uh, come up with there. Is okay. They've, they've been working with us on our outline of our city and, and the surrounding uh, areas. And in return, we would update our municipal maintenance agreement, which is, is pretty. Uh, pretty old as it exists today. One of the uh, issues that we had talked about was if we do take over the uh, moment of the medium, if it would allow us time for our uh, fiscal cycle to start October 1st, 2012, and be disposed of had several meetings. And uh, all that I asked was for a cover letter, which you have a copy in your packet, stating that uh, to 
to that effect. And uh, we talked about their agreement that they have currently with their uh, their contractor, which expires February 1st, 2013. So they added all that. They would keep that going until that point in time, which would allow us some time to uh, obtain the necessary equipment to start that process. But they're here to explain to you. It's just important to point out that currently the state of Texas takes up maintains the median due, due to budget cuts, due to other factors, TxDOT is asking the city of Florida to maintain the medians along 181. In turn, the city of Florida will ask, let's uh, let's beautify some parts of 181 to, to enhance the visibility uh, for people traveling through, through Florida. So that's what we're what we're talking about today is maintaining the medium of 181. Is that pretty much in 181 or the other the other roads through to town also, but on the other roads such as uh, through downtown, there's there's not much to take care of because the residential and the businesses next to the road take care of their own frontage. Okay. And they know they're maintaining already, you know, out towards the city park. Correct. Now, majority of it already. But the medians sit not all the way to the city park. Not all those medians are are those included also. Because I know we don't I know we don't mow the grass to that that probably to ninety seven of the park. I know that the you know the residential I think part do. of it is not in the city, correct? No, but I mean all the way to the city park. I mean to the city limit. We do. So on night so we're doing we're doing everything within the city limit. Yes. So they'll be providing nice shrubs and trees and we maintain them? Yes. We will install them and maintain them for a period of at least 18 months. Sometimes it's a period to get them established with your Any questions, Council? If this uh, if this is approved by the Council, they've attached uh, in their documents a uh, resolution or ordinance, whichever one that the Council feels comfortable with, that we can approve tonight. The resolution, <coughs> alternative resolution. Is there a recommendation, Mr. Rosenberg? Resolution, sir. We're okay with something like that? Yes. This is a process for two years. Very quick on the discussion of where as for some quick pro quo on the work that they will take on the main what they do for the improvements and that's what they're here tonight to tell you that they're ready to do. Did I represent that right now? Yes, sir. Any uh, further discussion of now have a motion? Thank you. 
for the maintenance agreement and resolution? In a resolution form. Yes. In a resolution form. First second. Motion by Hidalgo, you know, second by Melendez to approve the text of the resolution regarding the municipal maintenance agreement. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries please. Thank you. Thank you. Two years of hard work. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next item, uh, consideration action to appoint members of the Board of Zoning Committee. I understand we have uh, a couple of vacancies. John, uh, you're on the agenda. Did you want to? Yeah, we've had, mind? we've had a couple of vacancies here for a while. And as fast as the state's growing and all these RV parks and stuff are coming in, uh, we need to have a full uh, committee. And I'm going to take the last one on the forum. Uh, there's individuals that are very interested in. in being members of the planning and zoning committee. Tell us why Pond is one. Uh, he's uh, with the chamber, he's, a, he's the president of the chamber right now, and he's also a business owner. Uh, and he has to do all the paperwork that is required. Uh, so I will make, uh, there's two, I'll make one for my first appointment, fill up by Pond to the planning and zoning committee. Motion to appoint Philip Icon. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. Um, second by Melinda. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Philip Icon will be on the planning zoning. Okay, my second appointee will be uh, Katie Harley. She is also a businesswoman, also involved with the Chamber of Commerce. And, uh, she's uh, been involved in a lot of activities in the city, is also involved in. So I would like to appoint Katie Hardy to the planning of the committee. Is there a second to that? Second. Second by Moronis. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 4-0. Congratulations to both of you. Mr. Mayor, you might have want to ask them if they want to accept that idea. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm assuming the council already has spoken. Right? <laughs> now, do we have any signatures? All right, let's move on to presentations. A couple of weeks ago, we had met with engineering, <coughs> MS engineering, with a community meeting to discuss uh, some of the needs the floor has for a master plan, and they, uh, they're here to give some of the results. Steve, will you be? Good evening. Um, my name is Heath Woods. I'm here representing M&S Engineering. Um, today with me I have Jared Mott, Daniel Konstansky, Rico Lejas, and Christian Lejas. Uh, M&S Engineering is a full service engineering and surveying firm located in Spring Branch, which is just north of San Antonio. Uh, currently M&S has approximately 75 employees, including a shareholder who is from Floresville and that his family still lives here. And we have three employees that currently live in Floresville and are business owners as well. Today, we're here to present uh, the findings, uh, a brief summary uh, of the findings of our master plan. M&S was hired by the city to prepare a 10-year comprehensive master plan for the city. The influx of population and businesses due to the mining activity in the area has dictated the need for this update. Today we will briefly, we will be briefly covering these seven topics and try to answer three questions uh, for each. Where is the city at? What is coming? And what, what does the city need to do to be ready? Under normal circumstances, the growth of the city's population is a steady climb. Often for the city the size of Floresville, the growth is linear, with each year's increase in population matching that of the last. Until the last several, several years, this was the pattern in Floresville. Prior to the incredible growth, which has recently become, recently come as a result of the poor oil spills. In light of this unprecedented event, MS tapped not only into the standard sources of information, for population predictions such as the Census Bureau, school records, and other state and local sources. 
but we also fanned out over the entire country to analyze the pattern of in other cities and towns which have been swept up in the oil booms as well. Then MS supplemented these national trends with on-the-ground surveys of local businesses and residents to develop a picture of the actual breadth of the oil field's current and future impact on the city's population. Finally, the recent completed UTSA study on the economic impact of the Eagle Ford Shale. The result is a set of population projections which form the basis of the master plan developed by MNF. These projections are comprised of three parts. The existing population, the base population increase, and those are the people who would, would move to Floresville, whether or not the oil burn boom occurred. The oil population is those that have arrived either directly to work in the fields, supply the fields, or support those who work in the fields. This growth due to the oil boom represents an incredible opportunity for Floresville, but also, as the rest of MS's findings will show, has created additional responsibilities for the city. This graph illustrates the anticipated growth derived from the population projections developed by MS. The impact of the oil boom is largely seen in the three year window in which the normal pace of growth seems to jump from six to eight thousand people. It is expected that any developable land will become residential in the south and the west. Commercial will continue to increase north along US 181 and Highway 97. Currently, the city operates out of the regulations laid out in Chapter 153 of the city's Code of Ordinances. MS proposes that the code be reworked to make it clearer and easier to understand. Another issue is the availability of this information. Floresville will greatly benefit from converting paper to electronic format that are easily available on a website. A, a geographical information system, GIS, will improve the decision process by making vast amounts of information available and allowing easy comparison of this information. Though most of the parks are within the corporate boundaries of Floresville, many people outside the city actively use them. Parks were compared by acreage and facilities using the National Recreation and Park Association standards as well as the standard used by San Antonio River Authority. Local facility standards were set by community input from the 2007 recreational plan. Currently, Floresville could benefit from additional camping facilities, water play areas, softball fields, football fields, baseball fields, running tracks, tennis courts, and basketball courts. Less active facilities that will especially benefit the older population include horseshoe courts, washer courts, and shuffleboard courts. Based on the MRPA guidelines, as well as guidelines by the Floresville will need more parks. The top two are regional and community parks. Regional parks, which are the highest on the list, serve, serve multiple cities and are usually over 200 acres. These large natural areas include activities such as picnicking, boating, fishing, swimming, camping, trail use, golfing, etc. Community parks which were ranked second serve areas the size of serve areas the size of Floresville. They are usually between 30 and 50 acres and focus on meeting community-based recreational needs as well as preserving unique landscape and open spaces. Park improvements could be made to existing park areas to better utilize Space as well. The 
The master plan sought to answer two questions pertaining to the city of Floresville's water system. Is the system in compliance with TCQ minimum capacity requirements? And has the city secured adequate water sources to meet the needs of the increased population projection in this report? And MS staff conducted analysis of the five categories which TCQ regulates through minimum capacity standards. MS found that in each of these, the infrastructure currently in place is sufficient to meet and exceed the minimum requirements. <clears throat> Next, MS obtained actual operating data for the past several years from the city staff. This data was compiled and analyzed to determine what percentage of the current production capacity is being used. It was found that during peak months, the city currently uses around 51% of its permitted supply. Finally, the production, population projections were reviewed and a future water demand calculated. The results indicated that in 2012, the end of the time frame reviewed as part of this master plan, the city can expect to be utilizing about 76% of their permitted supply to meet the peak month demand. As can be seen on the graph, this value is well below the production capacity and is also below the 85% mark, which is when TCQ mandates that plans for acquiring additional sources must be developed. In the course of this analysis, two major deficiencies were found in the city's water portfolio. The first is that the city currently has no means to analyze the existing distribution system. This creates several, several dangers, the most notable of which are the potential to inadvertently lower the quality of service to existing customers and the potential to violate TCQ minimum pressure regulations. Uh, and here's a scenario that, that, we, that applies or that makes this, brings it to life. Say a developer wants to build a large hotel, which y'all are getting a lot of that here lately, and hook up to a water line near the edge of the city system. The developer provides a daily volume of water that will be needed, and that number is well within the allowable amount, or the available amount. However, the pipe which the developer wants to tap into, unknown to the city, is at or near its maximum capacity. And when the hookup occurs, the pressures in that pipeline drop. This could have a twofold of impact. First, it lowers the pressure, and therefore the levels of service to all the neighboring connections. The existing residents or tenants and longtime customers of the city. Secondly, if the impact is great enough, pressures along the line may drop below TCQ minimum pressure requirements, resulting in a violation, potentially state action, state action against the city, and ultimately money spent by the city to correct a problem, the solution of which should have been paid for by the developer. <coughs> Be long gone. That scenario also speaks to a second major deficiency, a lack of impact fee. The state of Texas allows municipalities to charge developers and other new customers for the cost of infrastructure to serve their development. These costs are covered by a one-time impact fee, which are collected as part of the service agreement between the city and the developer. And, and cannot be back charged. Currently, this is a potentially major source of revenue, which the city is not tapping into. In conclusion, the city's water, water system, its staff and operators are to be commended. The Floresville water system is in compliance with all TCQ minimum capacity requirements. Furthermore, the city has secured an adequate volume of source water to meet its projected needs through 2022. 
barring a large influx of unseen growth or a major rule change, the city should have adequate water to supply its needs for the foreseeable future. In the wake of this study, the city should take quick and decisive action to develop tools for analyzing the existing system. The first step in this process should be the development of a hydraulic water model. This computer model will allow the city to analyze the existing system for weak points and pipes that are near maximum capacity, as well as simulate the impact of proposed development before any contracts are signed. Additionally, the city should develop impact fee rates and regulations for immediate adoption so that they can be begin tapping this as of yet untouched revenue source. What this means is that while the city can say with confidence that they have an adequate volume, total volume of water to meet future needs, they cannot say the same confidence that a specific volume of water can be delivered at an acceptable price. Wastewater. The existing wastewater treatment plant was designed and permitted for 900,000 gallons per day. A review of the system perform, performed in 2008 identified several deficiencies, most of which have been corrected. The flow to any wastewater plant varies significantly, significantly on a daily and monthly basis due to the fluctuations in water usage and various other factors. At present, the plant is typically operating at about 65% capacity, with peak months ranging up to 75%. This means the plant is fully capable of handling the existing needs of the city. In order to provide appropriate time for expansions, TCEQ, TCEQ requires planning and budgeting to begin whenever the flow to the plant exceeds 75% capacity for three consecutive months. This threshold has not been reached and under normal circumstances, the city would be in a comfortable place to address increasing demand at a leisurely, at a leisurely pace. This graph shows the average monthly flow in blue and the associated three-month peak flow in orange. It is likely that the that this summer the plant will operate at 75% for a three month period, triggering the TCEQ requirement to begin planning for expansion. Mm -hmm. However, due to the expected sudden rise in population, resulting from Eagle Ford Shale, the typical time frame these rules anticipate could be reduced. While the actual peak demand, peak demand on the unpredictable factors such as rainfall amounts, there is a potential for the plant to be operating at full capacity as early as 2014. The design permitting and construction of a major water wastewater treat, wastewater expansion is a lengthy process. There are many options available for types of upgrades to consider. Equipment, to select permitting and more. At the start, several, several key decisions regarding budget and plant flexibility need to be made, which will greatly affect the direction of the design. Once submitted to TCQ, the permit generally takes eight to 16 months or more. The time from submission of the permit application until approval is highly variable due to public comment period the requirement to publish notices, and more. Once the approval is obtained, project construction can be expected to take approximately eight to 10 months. Overall, the process will take at least a year and a half, possibly significantly longer. As the existing plant can reach capacity in as little as two years, it is therefore imperative that the city begin planning for how to expand without <coughs> and give the early decision-making process a higher priority so that the permit can be 
submitted as early as possible. Road. In 1999, the 1999 study has served as the city's guide in prioritizing road projects over the last decade. Due to the success and usefulness of that report, MS sought to provide a new guideline or a new guide utilizing the same criteria and evaluation met methods which have served the city so well. Accordingly, the analysis conducted was modeled after the 1999 success. The evaluation criteria ranked the roads in, in the six different categories. Together, these categories make a, a given road safe, functional, and aesthetically pleasing. Obviously, the aesthetics of the road take second priority to allowing for children of Floresville to safely ride bikes in their neighborhood. Accordingly, the different criteria are weighted in order of importance. This is just a short list of the roads, the, the, the top ranking roads. Uh, the different roads were evaluated based on the characteristics described previously and given scores. The poorer the road performed in a given area, the higher the score. The scores and weighting were combined to give a final ranking of the road. This provides the city a tool to know which roads to look into working on first and serves as an update to the project list developed in that 1999 report. And then finally, the summary of our recommendation in, in this master plan. Uh, the immediate actions um, begin wastewater plant design and permitting, develop comprehensive water distribution model, repair streets with the high priority, concrete sewer line replacement, create or update impact fees for water, wastewater, and streets, and then future actions in a one to three year window begin construction of the wastewater plant, repair medium priority streets, clarify zoning procedures and regulations, rewrite city regulations, standards pertaining to development, drainage, streets, water, etc., and convert to online information sharing, or DIS. And then our long-range recommendations, three to five years, uh, continue to repair the streets and improve drainage and expand wastewater lift station as needed for future growth. And that is a brief summary of the master plan as developed by MS Engineering. Uh, there's a lot to the report. Uh, this is, again, just a brief summary that we tried to put together for you guys and give to you. Um, so at this time, I'll open it up to questions. I don't know if, if you guys want to get in depth on the questions or however you want to do it. Okay, before we start the questions, Mayor, I just wanted to add a couple of things to uh, MS's uh, work towards the city. The staff uh, has been working on the other end of, of this master plan. We are currently conducting a water rate study, which was a grant we received by USDA. We will to the council next month on whether we think our, think our fees should be, make a recommendation to the council, and then let the council approve it uh, if that's what they want to do. If we do approve those rates as recommended by the USDA, then there can be a funding source for uh, the wastewater treatment plant expansion at a low interest loan. So, uh, we also are uh, working with a grant writer uh, for our next funding cycle through the Department of Rural Affairs, I believe it is. Uh, we went to a meeting at ACOG and, and uh, presented uh, the issues that we have with the city right now and, and uh, the way it's growing because of the people for it. Uh, also, our street maintenance tax, we continue that, and that's uh, the funding source for the continued improvements on the road. Sure. So, Factors, and then we put a, a weight, a 
associated to those factors. Obviously, functionality is, is the biggest priority. You know, you know your streets fall apart, but then the, the curbs and the, the pavement width and and uh, and also the, the amount of traffic that's on that road were all factors and weighted. And then we just we we drove every one of the roads identified by the city to be put in this list and and put it and then it, it spit out the information and put it in order. So then that would change the map that you that we have already that we've had. It's it's based on that map. That that's how we got the roads to start with and look with look at. There's a couple along our way that we looked we saw and said, well let's throw this one in. But that was the basis for for the road. In addition, uh, just for the council of information, that the uh, study that they have done doesn't include the road we're working on because it's construction that we're completing. And we're the uh, parks, I think, is covered with water, wastewater, uh, streets, and the parks. I uh, attended a meeting with uh, Jesse Pettis with the committee that he's on uh, talking about the parks from San Antonio to Goliad how important that is also. We can't forget that portion of it because the uh, visitors that we have that are going to be permanent residents or, or temporary residents for several years to come uh, are looking at activities that they can do locally. The uh, mom or the dad are out working in the oil and gas industry and the, the other uh, parent has to take care of the kids and have uh, an area to go. So that's one of the things that they uh, made sure that we emphasize that that's an important part of our infrastructure. And we do go into some depth on that in our, in our study, but it's one of the things in our brief summary we didn't cover. Uh, talk to us about the impact piece. Well, it's, it's my understanding that it's currently being worked on. Um, basically, our recommendation was, you know, obviously, we need you guys need impact piece. Um, but they are currently underway um, and, and being studied by some. Uh, it's a USDA grant that we received, and uh, Mr. Gonzalez is his last name, I can't remember yeah. his first name, but we did meet uh, with him uh, extensively and he talked about where we should be. But he will do a presentation, a formal presentation to the council with the numbers uh, and figures that he would recommend. And that's why we didn't go into a lot of depth on that because it was being studied already so we focused our efforts on on other parts of the any other questions or comments council i know that uh we've been working on getting some other uh towers uh water towers put into place i know we're looking at getting one uh, by the eagles field that we're looking at maybe giving us extra and then uh, an extra water tower but um you know, uh, I know that uh, in the FEDC plan to Great Park, Great Park, I know that uh, we're looking at putting a lift station and some other resources out on 97 if that plan goes through. But I mean, that's two major water sources are going to get knocked out there. But what other uh, fees besides impact fees might we use? Uh, there's you have grants that, that you can apply for um, through the Texas Water Development Board. There, there are routes, you know, no interest loans, things like that that we've helped other water providers um, obtain, and that would be another avenue. Uh, but talking about the towers, I think, you know, it, that, that goes back, and, and again, sounds kind of like a salesman, but I'm, I'm selling it because we've done it for other communities, other water providers, and just seen the benefit of a water model. And a water model is talking about a tower, putting a new tower in. I mean, you know, is it going to help here? Is it going to help here? With a water with water model, you'll know exactly the impact. Um, you may be over designing something that didn't, that, that was more than you needed, um, or if you would put it in a different location, it may have had a different effect. So. Mayor, the, uh, the objective today is for MNS to do a, a quick presentation. You do have a total packet in, in your uh, council packet. If you need to take some time to review it, if you're all interested in what they put it together, this uh, can be approved at a later date and put on our website so other investors that want to come into our city can see what we're doing and what we're doing and what we need to do. Uh, in addition, after we get the, uh, the uh, water rate study uh, presented to the council, and that task has been approved, I will uh, update a capital improvement program 
Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all. Uh, 
the moss and and uh, nothing's been done for years. I know in Austin, of course, we had oak wells, and uh, you know I don't I don't think it's too close to here, but it could come. But uh, oh yeah, uh, then uh, I'll give you copies of this. The public library gave us a report. What is it? Well, I forgot to tell you, uh, Mrs. Steele and I are going to see the U.S. Star Spangled Banner. But uh, we've only got two months till I, I, I plan to uh, <clears throat> do a major celebration Memorial Day uh, at, uh, at the city cemetery. And boy, that time will be on us. So if you uh, would uh, give this serious consideration on, on the tree, I think it's important. Now, this does not include Craig Marble. <coughs> So, give this serious consideration. And if you have any questions, the gentleman's, uh, you know, his name is on here. Yeah, here it is up here. But uh, you may want to ask questions. So $9,000. It's quite a bit of money, but I, it's within our uh, budget, which was around 20. So I think priorities are, are the tree, the uh, repay of the streets in there. We've got, we've got the water, the water pressure now is fixed, so that's very good. And so it won't, you know, it's been nice to finish rain. So those are, those are the real top uh, priorities. And I would like to see it, you know, when I made my presentation, I think that the cemeteries like the, uh, uh, the one out on old one and one, stuff like that, we ought to get a decent fence. I don't know, I've, I've got to call on the, on the, uh, on that one, uh, as far as about this. And uh, the lady said that the horse is grazing out there. So sure enough, when I went out there, uh, but, and the fence is down on one side. And so, uh, I think it's important that we correct something like that. Clarify it again, the first priority is the city cemetery. Uh, also, I, I called, uh, I know I did add in the Worcester County News next week. Uh, we've had a lot of old uh, dead uh, oaks and, uh, and the sea trees. They'll make real good uh, barbecue uh, wood or, or firewood. And so, the ad said that if you'll you know, the, they're free, but you have to clear up the junk trees too. And uh, on the edge, there's dead crate murals and dead uh, ash trees, stuff like that. So we'll see what happens on that, and I'll report to you uh, after next, it's May the 11th. It's the 12th, I don't know how much is in there. Uh, I think that's about it. Mr. Russell, did you say you have other bids on the tree surface? Okay. Do you have other bids on the tree surface? Or is this the only one? No. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I would say that we look. That's not an absolute must by the uh, moral way. But it's very important. Uh, the way that the library librarian 
I made a presentation at our uh, mm -hmm. meeting, uh, uh, last meeting of our association, and uh, she's actually getting on to put it on the computer over there. Individual people who are in the cemetery, so many gives her a picture of the individual cemetery. She knows how to go through the procedure and that type of thing. And uh, so I think that's very interesting on that. So. And the other thing is there's a, there's a more that's perfect. I used to sell them. I had a picture somewhere. But, uh, you know, but uh, it cost $300 to try to supply. Now, I've got an anonymous uh, Methodist gave me a hundred dollar bill. And I've got Charlie Franklin wrote me a check. No, he, he didn't do it. <laughs> but, but if I could get, if I could, if I could get a, a hundred dollar check for a man with a beard, or, I can just say the Western County News. One attorney, one who was a Methodist, uh, one field director, and <laughs> then I have my three hundred dollars. I think now I can go pick, check for you. <laughs> I can go pick up the more Saturday. Uh oh. Uh oh. That's all right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right, we have uh, our annual report from our uh, police department regarding uh, racial profiling, lieutenants. person that's been taking care of this uh, from the second year, I believe, that we've been doing this, and we've had to do it for, I believe, seven or eight years uh, when the state mandated that we had to do this, the legislature. Uh, Sergeant Daria Fowler is the person that compiles all this information. She's the one that puts it together. She has the <laughs> and she wanted to say something, but she's got laryngitis. 
So she's going to I tell you what, she's my friend forever because she gave me a warning to it. <laughs> Very good. It's on, it's, on that, it's on the contact log, so we're good. <laughs> like I said, we fulfilled the requirements of the year. Um, I should tell you that we, we see no uh, anything. We don't see anything that we need to pay too much attention to. Uh, everything looks to be in line. I don't see any evidence of racial profiling within the uh, commercial police department or with any of our officers in particular. So uh, they're doing a good job. And, any questions? Thank you. All right, thanks. Okay, the next few items, uh, manager report. <laughs> Mr. Russ, we got more money. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Two Methodists and a funeral director. <laughs> okay, Mayor and Council, uh, tonight's management report encompasses items A through J. Some topics will be quick briefs on ongoing activity, and others will be requests to move forward on personnel issues. Your continued support and guidance is greatly appreciated. I'll start. The 4A Corporation is the event center and the 4A Corporation property. I uh, visited with uh, Ms. Carolyn Malasas, who is the Interim Parks and Recreation Director. I got a schedule of the events that have been held at the event center from October 1 till March 20th. Other than weddings and quinceañeras, they've had a national night out, peanut festival concert, law enforcement training, Baptist training, classic car show, ACOG meeting, will call services, oil field delivery. Opry Night, which has been a success and has been in the paper, and they uh, continue as we have several more. Uh, Ball Fest Cook Off, Texas Gun Shows, Brown Hearing Screening, the Expressing Job Fair, which generated about 1,400 people through our center, the Marathon Oil Meeting, the Comedy Christmas Party, Will Call Services Again, our Holiday Extravaganza, which, uh, how many people do you think were there, Mayor? About 1,100 people, good. Relay for live uh, kickoff, marathon meeting, Opry night again, a brown service screen, we'll call services, sacred heart, wine and art, men's basketball tournament, plateau land and wildlife management, chamber banquet, which was awesome, and I think I had too much fun there. Uh, <laughs> Express heat, job fair, uh, we'll call services again. Home and garden show, where's Miss Diane? which was a success, thank you very much. Marathon has held several meetings, and that's a whole company that's uh, it's real big in this area. And then we even had, like Mr. Russell said, and he attended the uh, Kelly Miller Circus, which was awesome. I took my family, and it was uh, an outstanding thing to have. So we have a lot of activity at uh, the center, which is good. What uh, we implemented is uh, facilities usage, evaluation form so we can get some uh, feedback from people that uh, rent our uh, our facility we've got uh, several and i'll just read a little bit the 50th wedding anniversary very impressed with the setup uh charles Rose team building which is a uh, a service that marathon oil does all equipment was clean and orderly everything worked uh, well clean and organized setup was exactly as we agreed to and then very pleased and enjoyed the facility and people, which is something that's real good because it's a reoccurring uh, use by these people, these organizations. City of Manor, South Texas, if anybody attended that, that was an awesome, awesome deal. The, uh, we had a, a member of the Singing Man group make a statement out there, which uh, I think that the council should be very proud of. He uh, came from another city, which is close to us, and uh, stated that, that he wanted his city council to come see that building so he could know, so they could know that uh, Floresville City Council is doing something right. And I don't, uh, I, I know the council well enough that uh, you don't want the credit, you want the, uh, the citizens who supported that to get that credit. So that was an awesome statement that was made public and uh, it gives us encouragement to know that, uh, that the foresight that the, the mayor, the council, and uh, everybody involved, the uh, 4A board, uh, was excellent and uh, very, uh, very much appreciated. 
Other than that, uh, Ms. Carolyn, do you have anything you want to add to that? Just that our center is extremely busy, and I'm very proud to be uh, to have been a part of seeing the center be built from the ground up, and being a part of seeing it uh, come to fruition and being as busy as it is has been exciting. Uh, the challenges we face uh, with the community and with the political climate have definitely, I think, instilled the passion in me that, you know, I have to see this building succeed. And as Andy mentioned, we have a wide array of events. I mean, we're busy. We're really busy. And I encourage all of you to come out and share this experience with us. I think that we're, it's a good thing. We're moving forward. We've got still some work to do, but I think it's, it's awesome. And I'm very proud to be a part of, of seeing this uh, center grow. Thank you, Carolyn. Andy or Carolyn, have we uh, talked about any improvements? Now that we know it's built and what type of events are coming into our, our facility, are we, have we considered other improvements that uh, need to be addressed in the, in the near future? Uh, Ms. Carolyn had uh, talked about what needed to come with our event center to make it even more market. There, there are several things that have been addressed, and this has come from usage comments and um, different things that the, the walls in the ballroom, the dividers would uh, help to be able to rent out the individual space and um, larger conferences that come in and need the breakout sessions and everything, that would definitely help um, our parking lot. Okay. Definitely needs to be updated and um, uh, that's something that we want to look at. Uh, some of the setup of the offices on some of the ends, we determined that entrances and usage may, you know, changing doors from one side to another will open up the ability to be able to market certain areas of the center. Uh, our sound system, we have a basic PA system. We do have uh, a snake that runs, they call it a snake, runs through our, our ceiling. That, and this basically is used when we have um, entities that come in that require a large amount of power to perform. Instead of them running cords along the floor to the stage from the back wall where people can trip and fall, and it's already happened where they needed this power to run the cords, and, and people have, you know, complained. Um, running the extra power in the, the conduit in the ceiling to avoid that and to address that situation is something that we've done pricing on and looked at and would prove to be beneficial to some of you that are coming in. It's a safety issue. Also. Excuse me. In her, in her position as parks and recreation director, she's taken over all her parks throughout the city, so she's learning a lot. And uh, I had all the uh, the employees on an interim basis give me a report of where they were the day they turned in that uh, this week. If you want to get a copy of that or want to review it, I'm going to say it for you. But she has been dealing with the. Uh, the Little League, the Wildcats, and the issues that they're having, and, and we'll continue to have to we address that. So and that's our problem. We need to add more parks to them, and that's talked about more ball fields, more football fields, more more everything. And that's just a given. So, I'm a lawn mayor. Carolyn, what are some of the upcoming events that are coming? Anything coming up soon? Oh, we're booked every weekend. Um, we've got a, bunch, a lot of social events, and then we have um, the prom. From all the well, we have Pope, Lavernia, Floresville Prom. We have um, we've got events that are going to be recurring events um, that are going to be there every year, like the Home and Garden. We've got the Bobby Flores Birthday Bash, the Consolata um, Fundraiser, the Trail Rider Association Fundraiser, the Fire Department Wild Game Dinner. I think I probably have maybe five Saturdays open for 2012, and uh, you know, so and the, during the, you know the weekends are falling into place. I mean, we've got people coming in the weekdays was our challenge, but even now, it was literally a circus out there this week because I was full every single day with trainings, meetings, um, you know, the word's getting out and people are just, um, the, that's the best form of advertisement because we're killing the, yeah. the week, during the week space. Ms. Sherry, uh, what other uh, events are you going to be up, holding up there or heading? We're going to be doing the Summer Country Music Series out there again, which is one Sunday out of the month. We'll be holding that out on the patio. It won't be encompassing the ballroom, but it'll be all the outside area. We're also going to be holding the 8th Annual Fall Fest Barbecue uh, Cook-Off. I was seeing cook-off. We did a whole bunch of job last year. We had a 23 team show up. All of those teams have almost committed to be coming back, and they're bringing people with them. So it should be much bigger. Um, that'll be a good event that we've got going on as so. well. And Ms. Margaret, what are you going to be helping with uh, at the center? We have the holiday 
Any other questions or comments? Thank you, sir. All right, I'll move on. Uh, Mayor for B Corporation, FEBC activities for Mr. Fred. There he is right behind me. He's going to pinch me if I don't say something right. So the FEBC <laughs> is working with nine companies to purchase property at the Rancho Grande Business Park, and this is Diane, uh, to bring their operations to Floresville. These companies provide different services, material, and equipment to the Eagle Ford Shell Oil and Gas Green. We expect anywhere from 100 to 120 jobs created within the next year. As the companies develop, they expect to hire more personnel. These jobs will range from administrative clerks, inventory supply clerks, managers, truck drivers, uh, material handlers, laborers, and welders. We're coordinating with the Alamo Workforce Office to set up a conference with all the companies to provide support for their re recruiting efforts and to inform them what incentives the state of Texas offers for creating the jobs. This is uh, Colonel Pettis. This is my my brief. So, work is underway to bring all water and electric lines to the property. Requests have been submitted to TxDOT for permits. Is that across the, the uh, county road or the, the uh, state road? For permits to do this work. The FPC sold 1.5 acres at the Veterans Park next to the dance studio to a private developer to construct a building to lease to the state of Texas for the Health and Human Services Office in Florida, which is currently on 181. They sold five acre tracks to Ben Reed, owner of the Creekside RV Park, for parking of equipment, Mr. Gomez, Councilman Gomez, that is currently in the front of the parking facing 181, and for use as a recreation area for the RV residents. Only one acre of the five acres is out of the flood plain. Mr. Reed plans to build an office storage building on this acre to support the RV park. Approved to sell two acres to CEG Construction, a local company to build cottages. Cottages are considered the same as a motel, and the city can collect motel tax from the guests. Working with private developers to bring new tenants to the old Walmart building, continuing to develop the remainder of the huge property, which is uh, where the Walmart is located, and they brought us a plan. I've seen it with my own eyes. Awesome, awesome layout. Of course, in any kind of real estate transaction, any kind of big uh, franchise uh, business, they don't want to reveal anything to the uh, paper is signed, the document is signed. So I'll, I'll just enjoy that myself so I can bring that or, or the FEDC can bring that to you. Uh, between the hospital and the Super Walmart. Also planning for the future development of the Whitman property, which is right across the 181 across the Walmart. And that's another thing that, that is a done deal, but we're working out the, uh, the uh, infrastructure issue with it. This would entail bringing sewer lines to that side of uh, the US 181. We met with engineers because that's going to take some engineering work, and also that would have to be a voluntary annexation because it is out of the city at this point in time. Working with private developers on the Holiday Express Inn, uh, you haven't heard that's a, that's a done deal also, uh, between the uh, right next to the HED uh, and the Executive Suites Inn within the city. This is another location by the other hotel. Other inquiries have been received for possibly two more hotels. Continue work with the downtown renovation. They don't want to forget our downtown area. And currently working on how to improve the drainage in front of the buildings, the cottages that are located, uh, one of our business owners built, uh, is bringing more water into the downtown area. So we're working on, on getting that uh, moved out of the way so the folks in the downtown area won't have to step in a puddle of water and think while we're working. Uh, Mr. Fred, is there anything else that you'd like to? Yeah, yeah. I'd like to ask a, quick, a question on that. Uh, I think I brought up your attention, Mr. Johnson, and uh, to Mr. Perez, on that uh, industrial park. Yes, sir. Uh, supposedly there was this man, I, I guess you had a meeting where there's two individuals that wanted to buy some land over there. Yes, sir. And uh, one of the guys was ready to have the money to buy the, the park, the, the property. And then Mr. Mr. Perez had told me that he couldn't sell it to him because both of these guys had come together and if they're willing to buy the property, why are we not selling the property or, or, or moving the ball in I think it has become an issue of, of a, a partnership that had dissolved and they wanted to figure out how we're going to justify which one. And like you said, one had money to offer at that point in time. My understanding is that uh, Mr. Perez conferred with his attorney, Mr. Dominique Carvajal, and he gave them the legal advice to move forward on. 
I don't think that the money is, is a problem there. Are, both of them are capable of buying. They came to us as a company, both of them actually working together. Since then, they've had a, an outing between the, both of them. And uh, the advice to us has been uh, don't get involved in the discussions or the, the disagreements. Uh, when they can get together or separately come to us uh, with a, an offer that doesn't have any problem attached to it, we don't have any problem. But according, if, if, if somebody's trying to make a business here, uh, I mean, your job as a, as a board and as a yeah, Mr. Well, as a president. Not, it's not clear, uh, Mr. Moranis. No, I understand, well, I understand, but, but this has been happening for a while. This, this man called me, one of the contractors says, I'm ready to build. Uh, we have the money. What is the hold up? I understand what you're saying, sir. But also, what are we doing? Whether, who has the money? If, if both of them have the money, and Mr. Bennett said, I don't want to go into the, the discussion about the highest bidder, but to me, I might be wrong, that's my opinion. I might be wrong to go with the highest bidder. They can build whatever they want to build. We're going to be making money for the city. Sure. But right now, we're on hold because, you know, I, I try to get an answer from Mr. Johnson. I try to get an answer from uh, Mr. Bennett. And it's been a couple of weeks where Mr. Dominic was going to give you us. And I understand what you're saying, we need to go to that, but I mean, what are we going to do, or what are y'all going to do as a board to try to get this sold so that company can come in and start building and, and start making some tax dollars or whatever it takes? We clarify who the company is that's going to buy the land. We'll be glad to, to deal with them or anybody else that wants the land. But at this point, we're but you But you have two individuals that want to buy it. What are we doing to 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 uh, you know settle this 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 dispute? It's not up to us to settle the dispute. Sure it is. Sure it is. No, no. Sure it is. We're just simply the land. These two individuals were they representing one company? They were actually one company. Okay, so they split up. They split up, but, but they haven't finalized among them. themselves, you know, what they're going to do. Okay. So right now it's just a matter of us injecting ourselves in the in the conflict between them. Okay, there were two individuals, but my understanding was Jesse was dealing with one of them as, as, as a higher level. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. Well, I mean, that's what I, I think one is more capable than the other, you know, as far as knowledge is concerned about what they're actually wanting to do there. But, you know, we're not going to decide on the basis of that. I think both of them are capable of doing the job and they have the money to do it well. But I think as a, as a city and as a, as a group, as, as a individuals, we should try to negotiate that as quick as possible as we can, so we can go ahead and get that company that wants to build. You know, this man said, I'm ready to build. I have the money. Well, and what are we doing? Well, thank you, sir, giving us under advice. Well, I don't think I'm under advice. But those type of issues that really should be resolved at the... Yes, I mean, well, we no, no, I understand, but I'm, I'm, I'm asking Mr. Fedden, and, and Mr. Fedden, like I said, Mr. Fedden, we can have him deal with, and I was hoping he was here tonight, you know, with a Mr. C, he cut stuff on his own over there where he shouldn't have cut. He went over there and, and did a permit over here in front of these apartments. He does what he wants, how he wants, and uh, when he's supposed to be doing his job, he's not doing his job. And, and uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not here asking him to do I'm not trying to raise, but if we have an opportunity to have a business to come in, why are we delaying it? But we'll leave it, but, I, but I'll leave it as a discussion. I was going to put on the agenda, but since it was on here as a 4A report, I figured I'd throw it in, in there, but I'll get my facts together. I'll get the person that wants to bill and put it all together. But I, it was just a question that I know that the FEDC can do something to go forward with this situation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martin. I'll move on to uh, the uh, Parks Foundation, which is a foundation that we uh, established uh, some time ago. And uh, currently there is no activity. I will be working with the Interim Parks and Recreation Director that she step out another job for you uh, to recruit interested individuals that can work alongside her utilizing the draft master plan. Uh, when the list of in the individuals is compiled containing completed applications, we'll make a recommendation to the council. We have uh, a very good member that's sitting in the audience also, we just have to get him back going. Uh, it, it was uh, an issue of, of uh, changes on, on the board several times that led to where we are. But we, we really have to uh, get on that and something that Carolyn and I will work on because of 
So the master plan and everything else. Will you turn, uh, recruit some board members that the council can vote on, possibly? Yes, we will get the, them to fill out an application. We, we can uh, try to, uh, I know she's been working with some of the leagues already to let them know, you know this is what we need. We are going to utilize the uh, $1 parks fee uh, to its intended and best use. It saves on there. The Park Foundation has to be involved. So that's the only way we'll move on on that. Okay, go ahead. Okay. <coughs> Planning and Zoning Commission. With the addition of the two new members, uh, the commission is fully staffed. Last week, last meeting was not held due to a lack of a quorum. This was due to a medical emergency and does not happen often. In addition, all required notices were mailed out for the potential RV parks, and the meeting notice will be posted as required. And uh, I'll follow back up there on the parks uh, feed. Number four. Update on activities related to the annexation of the recreation corridor to include the extension to Las Cabras, Highway 97 West Interest. It's something the council approved the last time. The survey was completed up to the River Park by Burger and Partners, which was the uh, firm selected to do the uh, survey. I will meet with Larry Heimer next week. I've talked to him over the phone this week to determine the work that will be required for the added extension to that point. Uh, I will report any further development uh, after said meeting. So we're moving forward on the annexation. He's done all the uh, surveying up to the river park, and uh, we just need to find out what it's going to take for that other report. And I'll bring that back up to the, the council. F, update and report on RV parks, permits, and invoices for 2012 fees. Uh, Ms. Cindy Nichols was on vacation. Her mama was in from Oklahoma, so she was enjoying a week off, but she did provide me with this. RV Parks, uh, sent RV Park owners a packet of letters of notification, annual notice, RV Park application, a copy of the RV, RV Park ordinance. Packets were sent out via U.S. Mail on March 15, 2012. Annual fee, annual licensing fees are due on March 30th, 2012. I had Ben Reed come in and say, I need to pay. Cindy's not here. Uh, hold on to your money until she gets back. Current application submitted and waiting for approval from PNG committee on March 28th, which is their, their next scheduled meeting, I believe, or she's going to host for that day, for RV Parks and Mobile Home Parks, 1956 Sutherland Springs Road by Alternative Lane, 100 plus pad sites, 2220 10th Street next to Highland Oaks Apartments, 100 plus pad sites, 1345 Sutherland Springs Road between Citizens Loop 181 and Highway 181, 12 pad sites, 703 and a half fourth the street, Eagle Record sites, 20 plus sites. Total number of future RV pad sites approximately 232. Projected revenue from the, the fees that she sent out, the, the notices, is $5,460. The projected revenue of these other parks are approved is $12,800. RV uh, ferry park fees are collected annually. And this is something that Lou worked on with the PMG. Uh, the annual licensing fee, just for your information, $35 per space for recreational vehicle parks with 15 or less total spaces, $45 per space for recreational vehicle parks with 16 to 30 total spaces, and $55 per space for recreational vehicle parks with more than 30 spaces. And uh, we are collecting a fee. It's, it's a minimal fee, but other cities are collecting it. I, I believe that's the best that we could do at this point in time. I know the uh, the uh, two new members of the PNZ came in because they heard of uh, all the activity and they want to have a say, so they want uh, uh, to represent the people on, on RVs. We understand RV parks within a business uh, commercial zone area that will we'll have to get a uh, special use permit that we get into the residential, and that's one of the issues that, that we got. we got to be careful. Human Resource Budgeted Position Salary Survey Organizational Chart, and that's item G. Uh, my request to the council, I pulled out my little contract here, my uh, exhibit, uh, these goals and objectives. And uh, for the second quarter, it says appropriately compensate for merit raises and salary range adjustments if job performance expectations are met. If an employee is below the minimum salary range, make the adjustments to bring the employee up to the minimum of jobs range by the end of the second quarter, which is the end of this month. Uh, monitor merit raise 
raises me to the first and second quarter to make sure they are in compliance with the salary range. Should salary reach maximum in range, provide opportunity for employees to excel in other areas that will provide opportunity for job growth or remain capped until salary range changes and employee salaries evaluated pending job performance. I know uh, Mr. Morones came in and, and uh, I know employees, I encourage them to stay within the, their chain of command. But I do not stop them from talking to uh, council members when they have a concern. One of the concerns is, uh, I know they brought it up to the, uh, the human resource department, uh, Ms. Margaret and Ms. Sherry, to say the council has said at, uh, at budget time that we were going to be able to possibly get another increase if we were lower paid. And we've got a couple of those. She's got a report that she can uh, uh, present uh, to you on that. We had budgeted in the current budget. Uh, let me get back to that real quick. Four one street department equipment operator, one wastewater treatment operator, and one part-time municipal court clerk. Those positions haven't been filled at the council's directive. We are at the six month. Uh, we've got uh, one gentleman out, unfortunately, on our street department. Uh, uh, he has an uh, a illness that's pretty serious, so he's out. But they're still working uh, the streets, and the court are the only members to include the department head. So that's a request that I'd be allowed to move on hiring somebody. He's been looking, he's been asking. Uh, one wastewater treatment operator, we've got a lot of activity at our wastewater treatment plant. Uh, we could uh, move on that one, and the one part-time municipal court clerk, the judge has come in several times and asked me, Andy, uh, we've got increased uh, activity because of the police department they left, because of the traffic, we're generating more, and some more help in that area. I said, I have to take it up to the council. Uh, according to this, it doesn't require council approval as part of my contract, but I would not do it unless I would notify you on that. <coughs> Lower end uh, employees, uh, salary, that's something that I've met with several on that issue too, said Andy, you know, I, I'm, I'm in that category, I know I am. And uh, Ms. Sherry, could you just give them a quick brief on where you work? That way we can uh, brief the council and get their input on that. I've done the original setting where I've gone out for other cities that are Sheets printed out, highlighted where our employees are compared to the other employees. 
the tenure that they've been here, because that's another thing. You know, we have employees that have been here for many, many years um, that, are, that are in there as well. So yes, I definitely have it. We can sit down, please contact me. We'll go through the entire book. Cool. Can um, we see it now? Yeah, I mean, can everyone see it? Sure. Or if you want to go get it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I can go get it. I've got it ready. Right. We, we can move on. Well, yeah. Okay. 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 The collective, police collective bargaining agreement. I want to read this out real quick. Collective bargaining agreement. Uh, March 19, 2012 was our initial meeting. The mayor attended that one. We've got the city of Floresville's uh, collective bargaining team consists of Mayor Daniel Tejada, City Manager Andy Johnson, Finance Director Fonda Kellner, Interim Administrative Services Director Sherry Pollock. A brief meeting was held and the collective bargaining team from the police department provided us with the following documents with changes from the contract they are currently serving under. And we have a copy of that. It's a, a pretty big package. Some of the changes are minor, some are more significant. We are, we as a team are currently reviewing the changes that have been put into this document and are, are compiling our response. Please review this document and please uh, listen to this last portion for me. Please review this document and any input would be appreciated. Please do not release this document as it is a working document contract and none of the articles have been in any way approved by either party. We will be tentatively meeting on the following dates, March 26, 2012, 9 a.m. City Hall, April 2nd, 2012, 3 p.m. City Hall, April 9th, 2012, 3 p.m. City Hall. And uh, these, these uh, collective bargaining agreements were a voter initiative approved by the voters, so this is something that we're bound to do. Uh, so please review what you've got. If you have any questions, come visit with me. Uh, we've already discussed some of the deals, some of the, the deal breakers for our end. Uh, my understanding is 60 days from the uh, March 19th should be our completion of the collective bargaining agreement. If it's not, then we act, uh, ask for an extension and move forward. And uh, it could take some time, or if we agree on the numbers, then we'll be okay. You know, I encourage the council if they could attend some of these meetings, uh, like we discussed last year's budget time. The collective bargaining is a is a, is a <coughs> mandate that was, was like Andy mentioned, a mandate by the people, but it's an unfunded mandate. There's no source of revenue to fund the, the CBA except for our, uh, our normal fees and, and taxes. So I encourage you to attend some of these uh, meetings. What did, what did we discuss that increase with you? You remember what we say, 75,000? We had we had figured about 75,000. If you look at that contract, it's a lot more. And on, the, on the salaries as well, when I was doing the salary update, knowing that the collective bargaining was coming up this year, I did do the salary surveys on police officers, lieutenants, and sergeants as well. So it's going to be Okay, and we'll move forward. Uh, and she can finish off the meeting. Annual audit tentative schedule for completion. Email correspondence with Pat Wagner, who is the CPA and her firm. Uh, Ms. Fonda says, Pat, can you please give us a timeline on the status of our 2011-2012 financial audit? We do have a council meeting tonight, and we have had our council members ask when the documents were ready. If we could have a date as to when these may be ready, I would greatly appreciate it. We would like to give them an answer so we can continue to stay on the same page. This is an email correspondence. I've had phone conversations before with her to uh, ask her that uh, we need that uh, completed. Says her response, I find that I am meeting with Tom next week to go over the tip results and some work he has done on the debt service tax. Tom is our contractual CPA that we have. I expect that we will have taken care of the previous commitments we had scheduled for March and April for the end of April and will again turn our audit focus to the city of Florida. We have meeting after meeting after meeting with the current contractual CPA that we've got and uh, outside auditors that have come in at uh, the citizens' request. So we are complying with everything that we can have to. It's a tedious, tedious process and uh, we will have a conclusion and a report to the council, or she will, because it's her responsibility. She received everything that we've got. And last but not least, on a good note, donation from San Antonio River Authority is... Are you here? She is awesome. My best friend so far. Uh, 
email correspondence between Ms. Karen OPL and I with the San Antonio River Authority. She sent out a list stating that there were surplus items that the San Antonio River Authority would be advertising for sale. Please review the list. I sent her a, uh, she sent me this on Monday, February 27, uh, 2012 at 358. Uh, on Tuesday, February 28, 2012, at 9.19 a.m., I responded, good morning, Karen. This is a follow-up email to our earliest phone call. Please, earlier phone call, I had talked to her earlier. Please consider the city of Georgia on Tuesday, February 27, 2003 Ford Escape, uh, we did the uh, Carp Factor Blue Book value between uh, uh, 55 and $7,000 that vehicle was worth, and we got it for free. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Thank you. You're awesome. So, all right, Mr. Sure. Yeah. This is uh, an incredible and I'll give
Um, I did had started the project and I kind of reiterated it when we got to the schedule. Once those were put in there, I put them back into the matrix to make sure that it didn't shift it. Um, and any of the numbers that I proposed were not put them out of sex, uh, out of separation or put separate them out of their section um, when it goes through merit raises next year. Uh, if they receive some merit raise next year, it's not going to put them well above where their job would possibly be. They're still within that same grade level. Absolutely, yes. Okay, one factor that we're not putting in is what is the tax rate for these cities? Mayor, I haven't pulled the tax rates on all those cities. I don't have that. I can pull those for you. Definitely. One of the things that I looked at as well when I was looking at it was to make sure that we could be within the budget that we're currently at um, so that we wouldn't have to do a budget in, a, increasement um, for the second half of the year. We're, like I said, we're under. I was crunching the numbers today to make sure that we would still be within that level and, and beyond. What can you have? Biden Park? Biden Park. They're all broke down by individual people. So you're not talking about big dollars. It's no. You, no. Few dollars, right? um, actually, we, we don't have anything over, everything is under a dollar. There's nothing. The highest one is less than, it's right less than a dollar. Um, one of the issues that we've got is our uh, beginning pay. Uh, most, of the, most of them that I'm looking at doing are we're looking at less than 50 cents, right about 50 cents. It's not a huge increase as far as our budget, but it puts them in line with <coughs> where they fall in their department. Um, because again, that's something you have to look at. They may be basically out of range for what they're compared to other cities, but within their own department, they fall right in place. So that's another thing that we looked at. Um, and so when I looked at the numbers today, I made sure that um, we weren't going. Pretty rich on hills. Right right one, of the, one of the things I'd like to point out, Mayor and, uh, and Council, uh, we are talking uh, about the Eagle Ford Shell area. We, uh, during my contractual negotiations with the Council, when I asked for, <coughs> for uh, my salary, the first thing that was brought up was, well, pleasant and doesn't make that. How are you going to do that? Well, they've had, they had their city manager forever and a day. And she rose through the ranks to get to where she was. They hired a brand new city manager. And they started them off, and this is public information, at $90,000 with the guarantee that they're going to move them up as quick as possible because of the area where they're at. Our self tax collection, our activity that we've got within our city is they have lost uh, about 17 employees to oil and gas industry. We've been extremely fortunate to. We've lost some others to other areas. But uh, this is not an uh, issue that I'm bringing to you to say, well, we need to compare to, to be like somebody else. This is something that you asked for and we brought it to you. We did it with care and uh, at a, a figure that's very manageable. One of the other things is our starting pay is one of the lowest in our area. Pleasant Hill starts their employees out at ten dollars. At uh, their three month, they get a twenty five cent raise. At their six month, they get a twenty five cent raise, and then at their year anniversary, they're up for um, advancing at that point. We currently start our employees at nine dollars an hour. I did not factor that into this project. What I'd like to do because it could be a big budget adjustment is look at it when we're going through the budgeting process for next year and make that a stipulation to go into next year's budget. If we start hiring people that we hire them at the higher $10 an hour rate versus the $9 an hour. It is keeping us from getting some better employees. Um, they can go just down the street and be hired for $10 an hour versus $9 a year. So. Not that our employees are not good, they're awesome. So. No, we have excellent employees. We need the new employees that we're hiring with the oil boom right now, getting quality employees to hire um, at $9 an hour, we're looking at a smaller range. If you may, just give me the information based on how much it would affect our budget, the total. It wouldn't um, change our budget. It. it wouldn't change our budget at all. I understand it's, it's not going to change the budget. I'm yeah, the just cost, asking as the total. The cost is $30,000.
And that would be for the entire year, um, which we're already halfway through the year, so it wouldn't be an impact on the ship. And that's an apartment. Right. I think of this larger picture, which we're missing out on, is that we are in compliance with HR guidelines. That's the main thing that we were after. Well, I think two things are at issue here. One is that you commanded that the manager do what he had done, which is make that presentation. And number two, point out those areas where you need to make some adjustments so you remain competitive and so you've got quality employees. And so I think just now the question is, you know, is the council going to say finish the job to the manager? And I think he's asking for your, your guidance and correction in that respect. Um, I think most of you have been out at the trade, not trade fairs, but the job fairs, and you know what your competitors are paying to drive a truck, to do things that you're asking your people to do, and there's some of those people pulling out 30 and 40 dollars an hour, or you're offering nine. So I think you really need to keep with the people that you've got and keep them on board. And I think these are consistent with HR policies, and proper and respectful. You know, Rini has a different worksheet than I have. What position are we actually talking about? Like three worksheets. Yeah. There, there's actually, what I've given you is just a, an example of, of what I've done to come up with my, my, my theory to show you that I've done the work. These are actually the positions that I'm looking for. Where's your breakdown, uh, Sherry Pollock, on uh, the department and the department That's it. Yes, yeah, sir. It's got all the, I mean, it's yes. information. That's it. It, it's got all of the information broken down. It's got all of it looked into. And again, I've, I've done extensive research on it. I've pulled their employee files. I've sat down and talked to the ones that there was an issue in there. Um, I've really do, done my due diligence to make sure that the decisions that I make, if they come back to being, you know, if we have an employee that comes and says, well, I want to do a grievance because I feel like I should have gotten a raise, then I have all of my information to explain to that employee why at this point he wasn't in the process. It doesn't keep him from getting his merit raise or a, you know, a separate evaluation, maybe moving to a different department. But at the current time, I can sit down and tell him, this is why you weren't included in this group of people that the adjustments were made. I, I do believe there should be a baseline set. So I mean, I mean if increasing the salary for a, a new hire, you know, it, it needs to be increased on the show. Thousand, we shall do it, but you know, just just wanted to see the information before we vote for it. And like I said, I've got it broke down for every employee, not just the ones that I'm looking at the increases for, but every employee in the city of Fayetteville, including the PD, which we'll work with as a collective bargaining. Um, and I feel very confident with what I've found the issues and issues I've gone that I've done my due diligence and I can stand behind the suggestions that I've made. So what you're saying is they plug into a great level.
definitely some suggestions I'll have during budget time that we can work into the budget for next year um, to give us a little bit of room between now and then. Uh, but these are immediate changes that I saw that should be done. Yeah, I mean, we're looking at increases of about 
billing data. Uh, normally, we can, and on average, for cities the size of Floresville, we've been able to turn around hydraulic models um, in as little as three or four months from start to finish. Dollar-wise? Dollar-wise, again, I would, I would hesitate to throw out a number until I look at the data that you have because it can vary widely, but if the council would like us to look at that and get a number to the city staff, uh, we can have that turned around by uh, the end of next week. Well, the reason I'm asking that, Mr. Mayor, is when D does its analysis and says we, we recommend the approval, we automatically do what was discussed earlier, which is we have to go back up to Pipe Street and find out if we've got capacity. The moment we grant a permit and bust the PCQ standard, and we've got an existing citizen who's going to have a downward go on the pressure, and then we've got a cycle we start. And so out of all the things that were presented tonight at the master plan, to me, understanding the water pressure issue and the capacity issue as we grow, to me, is the most critical thing that is discussed. And it's not really a action item here except as it relates to RE Park, and that's kind of where the rubber hits the top. It hits the road. Uh, so I'd like to ask the managers, the council, whatever, out of that report, put the focus on that because if we bring in 100 met, 100 <coughs> RV units here and they're in the wrong location for water remember when we did live, live oak at Roma, the one thing we looked at was the water and the wastewater serving those units because that's the critical component that we'll get ourselves in trouble on so i'd like to say amen to what they said but we need to bring that back to the council to the manager first and then the council We'll get right on. Any other business council? Any other questions? Comments from the audience? 